Hello and welcome to this live session. I'm Minnie Menon and you are with uh, me and we are talking about um, an interesting product range that we have at People Tree. Today we learn about Lambani art, a textile embroidery form practiced by the Lambani of Banjara community, a nomadic group in Karnataka. Lambani art is colorful and intricate with threads, mirrors and stitch patterns on fabric. Made by women artisans of Sandur Karnataka, the art is a tool to showcase their identity, culture and history. The Lambani celebrate life and culture and it is truly amazing how their unique handcrafted work reflects their indomitable spirit. Explore our range of Lambani cushion covers and table runners at People Tree. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the spectacular uh, embroidered works of the Lambani community that come from a small uh, region uh, in the north of Karnataka in a place called Sandur and they have the most beautiful tradition that goes back hundreds of years. In fact, one of the best-selling products from the Lambanis that we have is this piece uh, of runner. It is a iconic red runner. So the Lambanis are known for their uh, vivid colors. They have this obsession with red and they have uh, this beautiful work that they have with mirrors and thread work. So it's very, very simple. The palettes are simple, but it's all about an interplay of mirrors and thread work. Now, the Lambanis themselves are really interesting. They're gypsies. And I came across them when I had gone traveling uh, to see the phenomenal site of Hampi, which is uh, in uh, North Karnataka, which is, of course, the old capital of the Vijayanagar dynasty. It was one of the most powerful centers of its time. And I was going there to visit. Uh, it was a history tour that I was going there for. But on the way, I uh, was spellbound by these uh, this community of gypsies that I came across wearing this very vivid red color. This is the color of what they wear. They have this beautiful headdress full of mirror work, very chunky mirror work jewelry, and they're really eye-catching. As I dug deeper and spent time with the community, uh, with our team, I also realized an interesting connection that they had because as the story goes, the Lambanis came down to Sandur, which is in the north of Karnataka, with the armies of the Marathas as they came down. So they trace their origins to Rajasthan and the Kutch region where all the nomadic tribes, uh, of course, the gypsy tribes live. So you know about the Rabadi community in Kutch. This is the Lambani community in, um, in uh, Karnataka. And the Rabadis and Lambanis might have been related many, many generations back, but they're also starkly different. You see the Rabadis in their iconic black ordinaries and you see the Lambanis in their spectacular red uh, uh, outfits, which is really amazing. And imagine the connection. So the story is that the nomads came with the armies because they were the shepherds and, and the, they, they, they herded the cattle and they came to support the armies as the armies moved south. So this is the legacy. Of course, now the Lambanis are settled and they do this spectacular work. So we have a range of products uh, uh, from the Lambani community in Sandur on People Tree. We have this runner which comes in different colors. And for more on all of this, you can check out the bio link on our uh, Instagram site and you will get the details uh, of the collection and you can just click into that and you'll find that. Now, this particular piece comes in different colors. There is a blue uh, runner that we have with the same iconic uh, work of mirrors and thread work. There is a maroon with red work, which is also very nice. And there is also a black and red, uh, which is normally out of stock because it also goes very fast, but we can always order for it. This, however, is always there because it's always in demand. Now, this red piece also comes with a, um, a cushion cover that you can match. It has got some nice detailing in yellow, but you can see the fine thread work and the, again, square mirrors. Now, the square mirrors are large, but the Lambanis also have the small mirrors that they use and this is one of the pieces that we have from them this is again an interplay they, they do a lot of color on color so they have a base material on which they have these um, uh, small mirrors multi-sized mirrors actually small and large and they have these little tassels on the edges it's quite stunning 
and you have a variety of colors in this. We have one of this, which is really blue on blue, a midnight blue and a powder blue, and then a turquoise blue actually. And you have this, which is a grayish blue background with multicolor threads and mirror work. So it's got a very, very interesting design and palette of colors. The Lapani uh, community is quite interesting. There is an NGO that we work with in Sandur that is trying to help revive uh, this art form. So for those of you who've joined us a little late, we're talking about the Lambani uh, embroidered crafts from this place called Sandur, which is in the north of Kar Karnataka. It's very close to Hampi. And uh, this uh, tradition of embroidery for me represents the interplay between legacy and uh, continuity between tradition and modernity and contemporary styling of handcrafted products. We're very proud of this range also because, you know, you've taken something which is iconic, uh, which is uh, associated so closely with a particular nomadic tribe, and you've tried to reinterpret and reimagine it for modern day living. A table runner like this can pretty much uh, lighten up any room. It can be a stunning addition to your dining table. It can be on the center table. It could be pretty much everywhere. We also have a couple of questions, so I'm going to be uh, taking some of those questions as we go along the show. Uh, uh, the first question is, what materials are used in making the cushion covers and table runners? Uh, I'm sorry, I should have started with that. It is cotton. It is nice thick cotton because the embroidery work needs a strong base for it. And the mirrors are also large, so I mean, it can't be a flimsy base. So it is a slightly thickish cotton. It is also double lined, so it has a lining behind, which makes sure that the the embroidered pieces over here and there is a lining behind that. Uh, so yes, uh, the question was how durable and high quality are the materials used in this product. They are very durable and high quality. I, I personally own uh, many of these products uh, and understandably so, but um, this uh, is extremely good. But of course the care instructions is that you can't put it into a washing machine or you can't wash it. What you will have to do is dry clean it uh, because it has very fine detailing and you don't want to lose that in uh, in wash um, um yes so they, that answers the second question the third question actually which was are there any special considerations for cleaning or preserving the the work um you've asked is there a story or cultural significance behind uh, the specific design featured in these cushion covers and table runners that's an interesting question because um, when you see the lambanis actually you're quite amazed by their very unique uh, uh, style of dressing and the style of mirror work. Now mirror work is not uncommon in India. You have mirror work in Rajasthan, you have mirror work in Gujarat and there you're very familiar with the kind of mirror work that you have. It's very floral patterns, it's very uh, it's primarily round mirrors etc. What was striking for me when I saw the Lambanis was their focus on large square mirrors. This is not something that you see very often in mirror work, in traditional mirror work among the nomadic tribes. But if you actually see this uh, this belt, if you go to Sandur, you will see the Lambanis have a headdress, uh, which actually their ordni, the top of their ordni is actually a strip like this, which kind of holds it on their head so that the ordni can stay. They, they use their hands for other work, they carry loads. So they need to have the ordni staying on it. And they use this very, very heavy mirror work to actually keep it in place. And I think that's where the cultural significance of this big mirrors comes from. That's the association I draw from uh, this, what I've seen over there. So uh, this uh, is a nice representation of that because you have a traditional form which you've kind of incorporated into something which is quite modern looking actually. You can see this, it's, it's a bright red and uh, it might look a little brighter and more orangey over here in this light, but it's actually a very, very strong, vivid red. Uh, um, are the other question has come, are there any uh, specific home decor styles that complement Lambani art particularly well? You know, my view on this is that your style is your style. And you know, uh, the beauty of handcrafted products is that they can really fit in and merge with pretty much any style of, um, of uh, space or decor that you opt for. This is something that can be a signature piece in a otherwise very plainly uh, or very, um, uh, I would say very, uh, you know, uniform kind of, uh, if you have a color scheme, which is beiges or grays, and it's extremely sober, this could be a pop of color that you can use. This go goes very well with a very ethnic, uh, with a very Indian setting also, because it just adds an element to it. 
and it can go with both the classic and the more boho style of uh, for, uh, of decor as well because it is extremely versatile you don't need to put uh, all your cushions as mirror cushions you can put a single cushion with a combination of plain cushions just for that pop of color that pop of excitement in your decor or these are these mirrors made of plastic not at all these mirrors are proper mirrors and they're quite nice actually they are very high quality and because they are largeish there isn't much scope for it to break break down in fact i have one of these cushion covers and i have also realized that you no know, they are pretty good for hard use also i mean if you want to uh, throw it around in your living room where you hang out i mean it doesn't get damaged it's quite a hardy piece of work it's exquisite and also hardy are there any more questions coming uh yes there is one question on the special considerations for cleaning and preserving the artwork that have already answered um there is another question um uh, Uh, on how do the colors used in lambani art contribute to the overall aesthetic uh, i'm presuming you are talking about uh, the repository of colors that the lambanis themselves use what is interesting about traditional communities and i've always found this fascinating is that they're so confident about using bold colors in conjunction with each other without batting an eyelid we might squirm um, at at using a bright green a bright yellow a bright red and a bright blue all together in one piece but they do it with such a plomb that it actually looks very good it looks stylistic uh, however we have not taken the traditional um, piece apart from the red we have not taken that mix of colors we have gone in for a a more contemporary range with the lambani community and uh, these pieces really reflect that they are pieces that you can uh, use anywhere if you're internationally or in india in any kind of decor you can use these pieces uh, as part of your home decor over over your uh, dining table or on your sofa the lamani uh, products are uh, extremely high quality they are quite affordable and uh, for me they really represent uh, a very interesting and little known uh, corner of our country and also our history because uh, very rarely do you come across uh, an intermingling of stories in such a way imagine a community that has its origins in kutch in rajasthan and perhaps earlier in afghanistan because that's where the whole nomadic belt is they come in um, with uh, with armies that uh, that uh, have moved in and they also speak a very very unique language which is a combination of kannada and uh, their local tongue which is quite interesting uh, because it's got lilts of rajasthani it's got lilts of um yeah uh, you know hindi and gujarati and also kannada so it's a very interesting uh, piece by the way the lambani is not just in karnataka in uh, tamil nadu there is a community called the porgai uh, the lambadi women over there are also very famous for their needle work but um, the lambanis of sandur really have a very very unique um, product range a unique color palette and really are stunning yes uh, uh, uh somebody's asked about a gi tag that's a very very interesting question about the geographical indicator tag yes the lambani uh, uh women got the tag of gi in 2010 which means that they are the only place which is the authentic source of uh, lambani you can't recreate this in any other place this has got a geo tag of the lambani community i keep saying lambani women the fact is that all the people who work on this craft are actually women this is a uh, embroidery is largely done by women in these uh, tribal or nomadic communities be it the rabaris or the lambani so uh, at people tree we work with communities as you know from across india we are working with over 9000 artisans right now and our attempt is to keep uh, their craft as pure as possible in fact as pure as can be because we really believe in uh the fact that most of these communities um uh did fine work which is very in keeping with their in immediate environment with nature so the use of natural colors hand crafting all of that that's something that we are very proud of uh, because in today's world when everybody's talking about slow fashion about sustainability about the fact that we need to be kinder to the earth these uh communities and these crafts really represent the best of legacy of skill and as well as sensitivity 
to nature and the environment that we have. Um, oh, uh, somebody's asked me an interesting question about whether the pieces behind me are Lambani or not. Well, they're not, but they are also interestingly made of mirror because this is actually the mud and mirror art of Kutch. Now you will notice uh, that again comes from a, a nomadic community that kind of settled in. Um, this um, lippen work is normally used uh, uh, outside houses or within the houses for embellishment. And you go to Kutch and it's really stunning because you will have this beautiful mirror work, uh, lippen work, which is considered auspicious. By the way, both those pieces are also available on People Tree and we will be doing a special session on Lippen as well later. But Lippen is, yes, it's it's related. Lippen and uh, Lambani are possible cousins, but in a, in a long way off. But yes, they are related and they have some very, very interesting commonalities. Uh, Lippen is, of course, using mud and the earth, I mean, the terracotta. And this is using cotton, fine cotton, which the Deccan was so famous for. Okay, uh, there's a question on how to purchase this. Please uh, uh, log in. Uh, you can check it out on the on the bio link. You will get the details um, of these. Uh, so uh, I hope uh, you enjoy this session on uh, the Lambani community, on the work, the interplay of history, culture, continuity, and skill and craft, which we are very proud to bring you from People Tree. So thank you so much for joining us and we'll meet again next Thursday when we have another stunning range for you, another set of stories that will completely wow you. And I do hope you start falling in love with handmade uh, Indian artisanal work like we all have fallen in love with it through People Tree. Thank you so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm.